it's Pat Hood from Passions and Pastimes. And no, this is not the introduction to uh, Makers Monday, the little video clip that I have. These are my supplies for doing something very special called Viking Knit. Now, if you are a knitter, you may have tried knitting with wire or crocheting with wire if you're a crocheter. Viking Knit is a type of um, knotting, perhaps you would call it, with wire. And it has an ancient heritage, comes from the Vikings. Um, I'll uh, try to put some links to history uh, in with this video. Um, supposedly Vikings took their silver and their gold, drew it into a, a wire, and then knit it into coils that were then um, carried or worn as jewelry, and which also then could be cut apart into sections and used um, to pay for things. I'm not sure how that would actually work. My Viking knit has never been so incredibly smooth and even that I would uh, be uh, willing to use it as a monetary device. But it is one of the easiest things to learn to do, even though it looks quite complicated. And except for this one tool called the draw plate, all you need is fine wire. These are 24 gauge wires. You can I buy it uh, from my local craft um, wholesaler, where this is wire used by florist, 24 gauge, but you can also use any um, 24 gauge wire. This just happens to be some black that I have, silver, gold, you know, so I've got copper, um, red, green, blue, black, um, some brass or gold color. You need a round uh, cylinder of some sort on which to create your netting. And here's a, a variety of short dowels. They are the things that you can use. Here's a pen. And I've got a piece of Viking knit in progress on it. I've covered the tip with uh, tape so that I don't get pen all over everything. This I happen to be somewhere and, and uh, I guess I was working with uh, my grandkids and ran out of dowels, so I grabbed a pen. Um, you could once, if you have an empty pen, you could take the uh, ink portion out of it and just use that. You can use a pencil. Um, you can use a stick, a very straight stick. So anything, um, uh, yeah, that's a straight cylinder, and it doesn't have to be that long. You can see that these are. Uh, relatively short and they work very well and the length of the cylinder doesn't limit the length of the Viking knit that you're going to create so I have my cylinders I have my draw plate and these you can make or purchase um, I have all my wires I have wire cutters um, sometimes I find I need to have a pair of flat nose pliers to pull um, a piece of wire very rarely but occasionally and sometimes a crochet hook a small crochet hook or um, a dental pick like this is useful for if a wire goes astray and you need to pluck it out of a small area so um, before I show you how to create um, some Viking knit I'll just show you here's a piece of um, four corner right so one, two, three, four corners. This is the starting point up here. I've taken it off of its bay, of its uh, cylinder. And I've ended up here. I haven't actually closed it off properly yet. Um, and this is two pieces of wire. There's a join right there. You can barely see it. Um, so you don't have to work in super long pieces of wire. Um, this is a narrow dowel. Uh, here is the length of 
liking that I've done so far on it. And right here you can see a join. There are a number of joins. I know there's one there. There's probably one up closer to the top here. But after a while, um, once you get used to doing it and doing it evenly, you don't see them. Before I actually um, go and show you how to make Viking knit, this isn't, this isn't the end product. And I have a bunch of end products I will show you. But I'd like to show you the transformation. Because going from this to the final product is what I think is the most magical part of doing Viking knit. So here I'm going to um, take... Um, well, we'll take this one first. This one's a couple inches long. I don't, um, I'm, I'm going to just, uh, twist these wires together at the top. The other reason you need the pl these kind of pliers is for using the draw plate. And I'm going to close this in at the bottom. Just going to put this through and pull this tight. So this is a very short piece of Viking knit, but this is how we transform it. And this is why you can't really do this without a draw plate. So you to turn the Viking knit into a beautiful, flexible piece of jewelry, you draw it successfully. Uh, uh, several times through the draw plate. So I'm going to find the first hole. Okay, so it sort of fits through there, but not quite. So I'm going to have to start at the top here. Okay, so there's... I'm going to start at the top of my Viking knit. So I'm going to put... These are too long. Let me cut them off. Okay. Okay, so here's my draw plate. I'm going to pull it through. Okay, so it went through no problem once I got a handle, handle on my wires there. So that didn't really transform it in any way. So let's go down to the next hole in the draw plate. I'm going to pull it through once, twice. There's no real, real resistance there. But you can see it's starting to slightly transform. Let's go to the third one here. I think if I go like this and I use my pliers instead of having my big hands in the way. So watch, I'm going to pull that through. And you saw that there was some resistance and this is starting to change slightly. So we'll go back through the third hole. I'm going to go one more time. I find it's usually three times through the through a hole in the draw plate. And that's a, so you can see this is getting slightly longer. It was I'm going to go through plate uh, hole four. And I'm just I mean I've just given these a number based on counting down from the top. Now there was a lot of resistance there. Um, but it's smoothed out. My little wires at the top are not uh, very strong. They're really just for getting you started, but they are helpful for pulling through the draw plate. One, one, two, three, four. So as I said, I don't tend, I tend not to use the handle of my draw plate. That's just me. So I'm going to go down another one. And this is, I think, one of the reasons why kids also find this. Oh, now look at that. Look at that change now. Kids, so it's much longer than my thumb. It's much thinner. Kids find this so fascinating because you make something and then you transform it. And the transformation is as fun as the, um, as the work to create it. I know that when I first taught my grandchildren, they would take it to school in a little pouch. They wouldn't take a draw plate. They would just take some wire 
some cutters and a dowel. I've, you know, this kind of a pouch. This is a Clinique makeup pouch. I've got a great big one that I use because I've got labeled Viking Knit because it holds my draw plate. So here's where we're at. This is at the smallest on this side. I'm going to go through once more. Yeah, so it's much more flexible. But now here comes the fun part. This is where we really start to see the transformation. I'll go like this. So again, much more flexible much longer can you so you could see this can you see this as a bracelet um a couple more times through and as you're pulling it through the draw plate what it's doing is it's um pushing together the loops that you've knit it's making them all much more consistent so if you had inconsistencies you don't really have to worry about it because they mostly disappear here's one end that I'm going to have to trim where I, I did a join a few rows earlier but let's keep going we're moving up we want to get this as thin and this is where it's getting a little hard. Ah, there we go. So, look at the difference in length. Um, one, we did one, two. I purchased my draw plate kit from oh a jeweler in the uk uh abby hook who has written an amazing book about uh, mastering wire work and she sells amazing jewelry i bought a lovely uh a neck piece from her so we're almost i think to the to the full length of this or the full you can see how much longer it is Let's see if we can do it an even smaller run. There we go. So not all kids are strong enough to do this, which is why this part, um, you know, you may need an adult for. But, um, you know, I've been doing this with seven-year-olds and so uh, so there if this so if this had been you know twice as long I'd almost have enough for a bracelet so this is you can see how flexible it is compared to with where we started um, how much thinner it is I think this was made on that dowel originally or this I can't remember this dowel uh, probably this dowel so how much more flexible it is. Um, one more piece. We'll take this uh, this long one off. And I didn't bring a ruler. Well, it's not. It's probably three, six, seven. Let's say it's seven inches. Um, I'm just going to pull the end tight here. go trim that off because we don't need a really long case um, and I'm going to take this bottom piece off or this actually this is the top piece this is what's called the flower and to do this in the camera I need to take my glasses off So this little piece at the top is a, is waste. I left it on the other one because that was such a short piece um, to help me draw it. But usually you take it off before you do the drawing. Get one more loop to come out here. And then So 
sorry. Just going to pull this through my other loops at the top. There, so okay. make sure that you have a place to put all the little bits of wire. They're really awful if you step on them. Okay, so it's, I think it's about seven inches. And I don't have to start at this great big, tall, long, uh, the, the biggest draw plate. Actually, I can start here at the smallest one on the uh, other side. Pull it through. Because this is long, I can actually pull it through to begin with with my hands. But that one just went right through. So, time to move down. Two passes. Three passes. And you can already see it's almost nine inches now. Let's go through the uh, so the the transformation in terms of length is much faster because or, or much more dramatic because this is much longer piece to begin with. There we go. Oops. Ugh. Okay, so we're getting we're way beyond nine inches. We're um we've <laughs> let's see these pieces are about twelve inches across, so we're all we're past twelve inches already. And we're on this uh, end. Full, third from the end. So this is what it looks like close up. It's still a little bit square. And there's um, some long ends. I'm going to trim this one out before I trim this one off. Now, this little hole here looks like it's way too small to pull this through, but you would be surprised at how flexible this stuff is. So here we go. It has to go slow. Whoops, my end pulled off. Okay, that's all right. There we go. I think this is, sm this is as small as I'm going to get. I'm not going to be able to get it through the final hole. And uh, I was a little rough on my end wire there, so I lost it, but I can still pull it through. And you can see how much easier it went through that time. And I'm going to do one final pull. There we go. So here I have a beautiful coil. Um, too short for necklace but very flexible and smooth and uh, I can make I could join two pieces I could put uh, uh, wide hold beads on here um, you can do take pieces of, of uh, Viking knit and join them with beads in between them um, and it's really an amazing transformation um, from taking the wire through the draw plate um, and then from here we'll turn it into jewelry so i'll be back um, next time with some examples of the jewelry 